Hey, what's up, fellas? We're back out here at White Sands Proving Grounds, and today we're going to be implementing this burner in this here furnace. You guys remember a couple of months ago we built the ground furnace with a burner that was able to melt like three brake rotors in 15 minutes? That is one big hot pit of molten metal down there. We melted the whole damn block. The brick and all it looks like in 15 minutes. Okay, so this build is for Blake Superior Casting. And this is just a preliminary test before I give this thing its final paint job and all that. A little walk around here. I need to get my hand crank tool. Other than that, we were ready for the maiden voyage. I had to invent a special hinge for this door. I looked online for some different hinge ideas and I couldn't find anything that I really like, so I just came up with this. It's just a about 65 hours into this project, we're doing a little bit of preliminary testing here. We just want to observe whether or not the ignition system will ignite the spray and whether or not the spray pattern is in the way of those electrodes. I need to see and as you can see those electrodes are just getting sprayed to death and I don't want that We're really close just got that one getting wet now It's all up. And plus, the guy's holding it with the pole, so the thought that it's going to tip, I'm supporting it from falling over in a sense. So, this right here is pretty much going to get you a full pour, and I don't see any. It's tilting a little bit, but it's, it's good. Guys, I did a CG analysis on the CAD too. That's on the other computer. I don't want to pull that up right now. But just by holding this card here, you see the outer structure there. More than half of the burner, as you can see, is over the CG line. This side of that bar, the pivot point itself isn't what doesn't count. It's this supporting leg here. Because imagine if this leg shot out all the way over here. So it, it matters from here over. And it, a significant portion of that furnace body is on the other side of this line right here. I also shook it to see if it would tip. And I counterweighted it by putting the auxiliary equipment on the right side. So there's no hazard of this thing tipping over. I'm going to call that good. Plus, when you get some metal in the tank, you know. All right, fellas, so here comes the scary part. A lot of these machines I build have never been built before, so I don't always know that they're going to work, and they usually don't the first time you flip the switch. There's always a tuning process involved, and it can get pretty frightening. There's a lot of money on the line, a lot of time, a lot of times and put into this, 
and I get really nervous just before I go to fire up any machine I've just built because I know in my heart it's not gonna work. It never works the first time you flip the switch. There's always a screw loose or something, or on occasion maybe, but usually this is not gonna go well. Maybe I'll get lucky today and prove myself wrong, but I'm also worried about this phase of testing because I gotta try and blow this thing up so that I can teach people how not to. If it does have explosive tendencies, I've got to weed those out and I've got to be able to cause them to happen, not just wonder why they happen. I have to be able to initiate a sequence of procedures that induces that particular incident. And if I can't, then I don't know what the hell I'm doing and this is dangerous. So that's kind of the battle we're really fighting here. I don't want to get sued and I don't want to get anybody hurt, most importantly of all. So we're going to fire it up, and we're going to try and blow it up and all that stuff. But the main objective for now, today, is to just get that refractory heated up to 2,400 degrees Fahrenheit so it gets its full cure because it's a phosphorus-bonded material and it requires a 650-degree temperature before it stops reabsorbing moisture. So. Okay, so it's lit. I'm, I'm thinking the nozzle's a little shy of what we need in life. This is gonna be an extreme heat up. It's running quietly. All right guys, based on what I'm seeing, this nozzle's too small. We're currently using a 2.5 80 degree B cone. I'm thinking we need to go with the four gallon. I want to be able to put a big tall fireball out the top of this thing and then turn the air up and bring that fireball back down into the, the system here. This is a huge combustion chamber. This can do 400 pounds of brass. So everything worked out great. It sparked right up. I'm not seeing any major backflash right here. It does look like we have a significant cold zone towards the front and I was kind of expecting that. I'm gonna turn the air up a bit. I'm worried about a flame out, so actually I'm gonna wait. If we let it get real hot and we experience a flame out from adjusting, it'll light back up a lot safer and a lot easier. It's starting to act kind of weird. Actually our fuel pressure is a little high. I want to keep it in the 300 PSI range if possible. I'm way too high on pressure. I don't like running this equipment that high. It, it can do it. So we're definitely gonna wanna go to the four gallon per minute nozzle for sure. I can tell already, but we're already here. We're just gonna run the tank with this as it is and see what type of internal temps we end up with. I'm gonna turn the air up maybe a little. All right, we're about 23 minutes into the bake out. She's running phenomenal. I'm gonna turn the air up a touch. Added a little air there. Might have been a little much, I don't know. We have very hot material in there. I'm gonna get this ladder set up. I did blow a gasket over here. I'm gonna have to get a thicker gasket right there. But everywhere else it held up nice. Need to get some good ceramic gasket over there on that side too. I just turned it down. It smokes a lot when you turn it down. It's not 
not that loud at all, which I'm very happy about. We're gonna have to get some better ceramic gasket. I have one of those black thousand degree gaskets on there right now. It's all I could find on short notice. I have some on the way. Been running for about an hour, I think. Definitely lost the gasket on that side. need a bigger nozzle to put much more air into it. It's starved of fuel, but this could still do brass just fine, I bet. I, I forgot to hit record on that. All right, fellas. To melt brass, we want to be in this dark orange band here. And as you can see, we're getting colors as bright as light yellow in this image. Almost white. Now the camera's a little bit deceiving. It gives you a couple of extra shades. So I wouldn't call this white, but it was definitely that light yellow. Oh yeah. Nice. Yeah, we got some serious heating going on in there. I'm still thinking I'm gonna want that bigger nozzle, the four gallon. I think this thing has so much more performance to offer. So we're gonna swap nozzles. We're gonna get that ceramic uh, gasket on the way. We're going to go from there. Whew. She's a little hot. <laughs> 